Welcome to Grace for today. Blessings, everybody. God bless you. We are grateful for the blessings of the Lord that are chasing us down and overtaking us. God remains faithful. We used to sing that little song that said he is faithful and he is still faithful. No matter what's going on in our world, we need to always remember God is faithful. Good morning. Hey, Doris. Hey, Sister Janet. I can't see who else is watching, but good morning, everybody. Good morning, Missionary Green. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'm eternally grateful for you being here, and thank you for sharing as soon as you come on. Thank you for that. Tracy Green Brown, y'all, look what I got in my mailbox yesterday. Can y'all see this? Y'all see what I got? I got a happy birthday. I celebrate all month too. I don't announce it, but y'all see what I got? Surviving the worst to get to my best by who? Tracy Green Brown. Listen, I started last night. I got a little sidetracked, but thank you. And yes, when I first got my book, I'm pleased. You Can you tell? I'm pleased. I said, she didn't even autograph it. But then I looked and I thought, yes, it's autographed. So my story, surviving the worst to get to my best. Thank you. Thank you. That Just thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. I had to, had to, I was late because I had to run back to my bedroom to um, pick up. Good morning, everybody, to pick up, to get my book, my book. So y'all, if you get a chance, I don't know what platforms it's on, but don't forget to uh, pick up a copy of her book. Let's see, I want you to make sure you can see it. Surviving the Worst to Get to My Best. All right. There's some other um, Grace Today viewers who have books as well. But thank you, thank you, thank you. I plan to read that this week. Absolutely. And um, God, I, you know, I'm just eternally grateful. So thank you for that. So I appreciate all the birthday gifts. I really do. This was the best prophetic birthday ever. So, woo! All right. I just ran, but I'm back now. Let's get started. Thank you for sharing as soon as you come on. And uh, let's get started. Oh, let's um, put the right thing up here so I can see. Yeah, now, let's get started. So we've been talking about Joseph. You know, I've been hearing Joseph everywhere. I would say that everybody's talking about Joseph because I'm talking about Joseph, but I know that's not the case because that's just something that God is doing. He has cohesion in the body. So let's look at, continue to look at Joseph. I want to go back to that same passage we discussed yesterday. Good morning, Mother Roby. Good morning. Hey, y'all. All right. So thank you all for joining. Thank you for sharing when you come on. And uh, let's go back to the scripture. So we understand here. Um, Joseph is about to be uh, thrown in prison. I'm going to get all y'all family dynamics one day. It's just not today, but God bless everybody. Amen. Um, here we understand the lie that was concocted against Joseph. And I'm sure he was waiting. Good morning, Veronica. This is a Veronica. We, we, we were, he was anticipating the worst. But you know, when you know that God is in it, you don't fret and become so anxious about things. You don't become so anxious and worried about what the enemy's plotting and planning because he's always plotting and planning. But you know that uh, the Romans 8, he didn't have Romans 8, 28. We got Romans 8, 28. And this we know that all things work together for good to those who what? Love the Lord. Do you love Jesus? Are you called according to his purpose? Then Romans 8, 28, then we know that all things are working together, working together, working together. They are being orchestrated for our good. They are being orchestrated, strategically orchestrated, implemented for our God. It will produce good in the end. Love that word, orchestrated. God orchestrates our lives. There, there's no one who could write a better part for your life than God. No one could have put you in at the right moment than God. 
Only God can do it. We sing that. But do we really believe only God could do it? Only God really can do it, beloved. Only God can do it. And only God will do it. Let's trust him. So we see Joseph uh, being uh, accosted by this woman. Yes, he was. And he stood for... Um, holiness he stood for righteousness and all when all he could do was stand he stood and we have to do that so she kept his garment by him by him um kept his coat or his garment by him good morning linda by him until her well she didn't call him her husband but till joseph's master came told you something was different about that relationship all right and when Joseph's master came, she said she he heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled, and Joseph's master took him. I had an analogy I needed to give you, and here it is right here. His master took him. <laughs> right, Pastor Steve. Uh his master took him and put him into the prison. Put a pen right there. Do you remember hearing this phrase, a similar phrase to this, of another chapter or so back? Chapter 37, verse 24. And they, his brothers, took him and cast him into a pit. So you have other people taking Joseph and casting him, taking Joseph and putting him. Sounds like things that are beyond his control. Sounds like things that are beyond his control. And beloved, there will be things happening in your life, in your world, that may be beyond your control. It doesn't mean that you throw in the towel, you towel, you fall into depression and heaviness, and you pick up that address. That's where you're going to reside. No, no, no. That's not where we reside. We keep our heart fixed, our eyes focused, and our minds made up that my confidence is in God. He knows the way that I take. And when he's tried me, sometimes it's that our faith is being tried. It's being tested. It's being put to the test. The question is, will we stand the test? Or will we just say, no, I ain't doing that no more. You need to know when to say when, but some things you need to know God is trying to grow you up. He's trying to build you up. He's trying to draw. He's trying to stretch you. And sometimes we just don't want to be stretched. It's uncomfortable. I don't like it here. Y'all know I told y'all that the Toys R Us theme song that we, I know some people, if you don't remember, uh, Toys R Us people is out of business now. But the, the theme of the song was, I'm a Toys R Us kid. I don't want to, I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. We don't, we don't want to grow up. And grown men, grown women would go to Toys R Us and spend hours. Because they wanted to just be a kid. And it made it fun even for adults to be kids. But the thing is this, Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I spake as a child. But when I became a man, a mature person, I put away childish things. The problem is, is as we grow older, sometimes we don't want to put away, put away, stop doing the childish things. We still want to act like, uh, we're, we're, we're back in high school. We still want to act like we're in junior high and we want to get the hotties or we want to make sure that we, whatever, whatever analogy, right? Sister Brandy, there is a blessing. Listen, if you want to be prepared for the next, 
N-E-X-T, for the thing that God is trying to get you to, for the things he's trying to put in your hand. Learn while you're there. What, good morning. Look at my great nephew. Hey, Krishan. We should let God stretch us. He will, he will help you to grow. You don't want to be, you don't want to be 15 forever. I know we as adults will say, man, those were the days. I ain't have no bills. I didn't have this. That those were the days, but those were the days where you were restricted. Those were the days where, where you did not have control. You had, you were under, as my mama said, you were under their roof and you had to abide by their rules. But now you get to make the rules. We, there are benefits and disadvantages to both, but we'd rather be mature. That way we could do the things that we're called to do. God wants to grow us up. I need to, so there was always in Joseph's life in chapter 37 and chapter 39, someone taking him. Joseph's master took him, put him in prison, but he put him in a place where the king's prisoners were bound and he was there in the prison he wasn't in a regular old prison bear that in mind he was not in the regular people prison he was not in the regular people prison he was in the prison if there is such a thing he was in the prison with the special people it was the king's prisoners so these were prisoners who had access to the palace. See, we must realize sometimes that God has strategically placed you. It may not be where you want to be, but you're surrounded by folk who have special access. Read on here. He says, and, but the Lord, verse 21, Genesis 39, 21. I need to finish this part so I can get to chapter 40 tomorrow. I'm not going to finish, but we'll pick it up tomorrow. Verse 21 of chapter 39 says, but the Lord was with Joseph. If anything, you want the Lord to be with you wherever you are. If God ain't with me, I don't want to be there. I don't care if it's on Peel Hill, Capitol Hill, where I, if it's the dungeon, if God isn't there, I don't want to be there. I don't care what relationship it is. I don't want to be where he is not. I don't care how much money it is. I don't care how glamorous it is. If God isn't there, I don't want to be there. I don't care whose name is associated with it. I don't want to be there. I don't care who's there. I don't want to be there. I don't care if everybody else is there and the room is full of people. If God isn't there. I don't want to be there. Does that make sense? If God was there and Ichabod is written across the doorpost, I don't want to be there. Unless he says, go and resurrect that dead situation. But the Lord, verse 30, verse 21, I got to go. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him Mercy, I'm going to pick this up tomorrow, verse 21, showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper. Wherever, what did I tell y'all the other day? The favor was on Joseph. The favor was on Joseph. The favor was on, wherever Joseph went. Matter of fact, if the Lord grants me strength, I'm about to do a little video for my family to remind them that they are called to be the head and not the tail. The favor is on, was on Joseph because the promise was to Joseph. The dreams were about Joseph. And when we believe that, we begin to speak that over ourselves, over our own lives, over our children's, 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 children's lives. Doesn't matter that today may be dark. The favor is on me. The favor. Man, I'm going to type that in there for myself. The favor is on me because God promised, because God promised, because somebody prayed for me. 
Somebody prayed for you too. So the favor is on Joseph that wherever he was going, God was going to do what he promised right here. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. Showed him mercy and gave him favor. And God will do the same thing for us. I got to go. My time is gone. We'll pick up 39, 21 tomorrow and then move right on over into chapter 40. Because I believe you're going to start seeing how God strategically orchestrated the life of Joseph to bring him to where he had promised. Those dreams were going to be fulfilled. It took some time. Yes! But God will keep his promises. God keeps his promises. He watches over his word to fulfill it. The favor's on me. I don't have children. So I speak the favor is on my nieces, my nephews, my siblings, upon their children, upon their children's children, upon their children's children's children. Yes, it is. Don't get me started. All right. Father, we thank you so much for what you've begun and for what you're doing in us. Lord, we will wait on you. And we know that you are for us. And that you will show us mercy and give us favor. Give favor to the viewers. Give favor to the Grace for Today family. Give favor to their children. Give favor to their children's children. And their children's children, as many as are far off, as many as you call. Father, for wherever these children are, whether they're on college campuses, whether they're out for the summer, whether they're across the seas, whether they're in another state, God, wherever they are, give them favor and show them mercy. Let blessings chase them down and overtake them. Give them favor where it matters. Give them favor where it matters. Open doors before them. Father, give them testimonies. We thank you for it even now. Be our healer. Heal our bodies. Heal our minds. Heal our thinking so that we'll begin to think like you and our mouths will begin to say what you say that will change the dynamics of our future. We agree with your word and we will have what we say. We thank you now. We receive it done in Jesus' name. So it is. Amen. All right. My time is gone. My time is way gone. All right, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Listen, don't forget to share the video. Type in catch the replay. Hashtag grace for today. I'll upload this to YouTube in just a little bit. Listen, I believe the word of God. And I'm going to say it because I believe it. You will have, this Bible says you will have what you say. My question is, what are you saying? And we have to, we, we all, I mean, sometimes I have to remind myself, don't say that. Because you're going to have, you're going to produce something. What are you going to produce? <laughs> Hallelujah. This is Janet said, my virtual neighbors walk in the favor of God. Hallelujah. We decree and declare it is so. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. All right, got to go. Hey, don't forget, join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this time. Spending the word of God is never wasted in you. Have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.